Now, last year I read a book that described the way the world works in ways better than I can, but I completely agree with it. And so since I read something I completely agreed with, I immediately concluded the author was a genius. You've all had that experience. The title of this book is Non-Zero. The author is Robert Wright. And if you haven't read it, I urge you to get it and read it. Stripped down to his essentials, Wright's arguments essentially is this. From the dawn of human association to the present day, the interactions of people within and among societies have grown steadily more and more complex, making people more and more interdependent. Interdependence requires people to look for, in the words of game theory, from which the book gets its title, non-zero-sum solutions. Now, in game theory, a zero-sum game is like a presidential election or the NBA Finals. In order for one side to win, somebody else has to lose. A non-zero-sum game is a peace process. In order for one side to win, the other side has to win. Both have to win. I believe that the defining characteristic of the 21st century is global interdependence. We see it in economics, in information technology, in culture, in advances in the biological sciences, in the shared security threats of AIDS and global warming and terrorism and weapons of mass destruction. In such a world, we must recognize that we have to look for zero-sum solutions, non-zero-sum solutions. We have to look for solutions where we can all win. And we have to be animated, I think, by some simple principles. When I say this, some of you may still think I am naive. But I can honestly say I walked out of the White House on the last day more idealistic than I was the day I walked in. I believe that because we live in an interdependent world, we must accept the fact that all people are created equal entitled to a chance at a decent life, that no one has a monopoly on truth, that we all do better when we help each other. Therefore, one person's dignity is not by definition another's humiliation, one person's work of God not by definition another's heresy. Even zero-sum solutions like elections have to be conducted in a way that the overall process is bounded by rules and restraints and shared decision making so that everybody feels that the system itself is good for everyone. In other words, there has to be a way to find a truth we can all share, to let go of old hurts and hatreds, to imagine a future different from the past. That was the belief system that drove our efforts to make peace in the Balkans, in the Middle East, and Northern Ireland, to promote peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula and end the nuclear and missile programs of North Korea, to solve the conflicts between Eritrea and Ethiopia, the tribal conflicts in Burundi, to heal the wounds of Rwanda, to deal with the border dispute between Peru and Ecuador, the terrible conflict between India and Pakistan over Kashmir, the problems of East Timor and Indonesia, the difficulty of preserving Colombia's old but fragile democracy in the face of narco-traffickers and terrorists, the continuing and maddening conflict between Greece and Turkey over Cyprus, the effort to establish an international criminal court and to make common cause against AIDS and global warming and terrorism and weapons of mass destruction. All these efforts, whether we succeeded or failed, were based on my conviction that the most important fact of modern life is our interdependence around the world. And that we are better off failing in the post-Cold War world. After all, we won the Cold War. We're the world's only superpower. It won't last forever. We are better off trying and failing so that people see us standing up for human dignity 
and non-zero-sum solutions and interdependence that is positive than walking away and turning a blind eye. I do not believe America's stature in the world was diminished one whit by the fact that we labored until the last hour of the last day to get a comprehensive peace in the Middle East. And today we see the consequences of not making it. But what I want to say to all of you, and I want you to hear me clearly, I spent a lot of time thinking about this for many years. Our obligation is to establish an era of positive interdependence. And our ability to do that requires more than simply an intellectual acceptance of the way the world works. To achieve the higher level of consciousness that we have to find to make the most of the modern world, we literally have to achieve personal, psychological, and spiritual victories over impulses that are deeply embedded in human nature. For we all still tend to fear and distrust those who don't look like us, talk like us, worship like us, think like us. When you're afraid of somebody and you don't trust them, it's a short step to disliking them. If you dislike them, it's a short step to hating them. If you hate them, it's a short step to dehumanizing them. And once you do that, it's not very difficult to justify killing them. But it all starts with the fear of the other. And we must, a fear I might add that was once quite rational when people came out of caves and there was limited food and you wanted to feed your kids and maybe in order to do it, you had to stop someone else from feeding theirs. But with every passing year, when we become more and more interdependent, those kind of fears have to be abandoned for a higher level of thinking and feeling. We have to believe in interdependence. And we have to believe that we will be better off when we work together.